I am Pastor David Becker, pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Thanks also to KKIN Radio for broadcasting this service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. That's stjohnaitkin.org. At the present time, we are holding in-person services at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. On this, the seventh Sunday of the Epiphany, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way. Fret not because yourself, uh, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, well in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will act. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended from all adversity. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading, our Old Testament lesson, comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 45, and I'll begin at the third verse. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into slavery sold into Egypt. And now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord over all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me. You and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, for there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. 
And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt, and of all that you've seen. Hurry, and bring my father down here. And then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the children's lesson for today, I want to talk about how God sometimes uses bad things to ha that happen to us for good. Uh, let's say uh, you know, a friend, a good friend moves away and you're sad about that. That's not a good thing, that's a bad thing if you're not going to be able to see this friend for a while at least. Uh, but God can use that bad thing that happened for good. He can maybe enable you to make a new friend. And so you not only have one friend, but two friends. In our lesson for today, our Old Testament lesson for today, we hear how uh, Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, brothers who had done something evil. They had sold him into slavery, into Egypt. But what does Joseph say to his brothers? You meant it for evil, but God used it for good. God used it for good. God saved not only Jacob and his family, but God saved many families through what Joseph did. And as we think about Joseph, we have to think about Jesus. Because some bad things happened to Jesus, but God used those for good, and he used those things to save us. Amen. Our epistle lesson comes from Paul's letter, first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. I'll begin at the 21st verse. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God, the Father, after destroying every rule and authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Why am I in danger every hour? I protest, brothers, but my pride, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die every day. What do I gain, if humanly speaking? I fought with beasts at Ephesus. If the dead are not raised, let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Wake up from your drunken stupor, as it is right, and do not go on sinning. For some have no knowledge of God. I say this to your shame. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies, and what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. For not all flesh is the same, but there is one kind for humans, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is of one kind, the glory of the earthly is of another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for star differs from star glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown perishable, what is raised is imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson comes from the gospel of St. Luke chapter 6. Begin at the 27th verse. Jesus said, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. 
To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from the one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you, and from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to go back to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, especially expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We now confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Our text for our consideration comes from our Old Testament, actually is our Old Testament lesson for today, Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 to 15, of which I just want to read the following. Joseph said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt, and now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you for you a remnant on earth and to keep you alive for you, many survivors. So it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, the Lord of all his house, and ruler over all of the land of Egypt. Hurry. And go to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord over all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. Here ends the reading of our text. There are a couple of idioms, or should I say uh, uh, expressions that we might use that, that could describe what's happening in our text. One is the expression, having to eat humble pie. That's what you do if you have to apologize for a mistake you've made. The other expression is this, going to someone with hat in hand. That's what you have to do when you go to someone with more power than you and have to ask them for a favor. Well, going to someone with hat in hand is what Jacob's sons had to do when they went to Egypt to ask the de facto ruler of Egypt for bread. Their family needed that bread to survive because there was a famine in the land. They had heard that there was bread in Egypt, so they went with hat in hand to ask for bread. 
little did those brothers know. The de facto leader of Egypt was, his, was their own little brother. The little brother they had sold into slavery years ago. The little brother they thought was dead. When they got there, they didn't recognize their brother. He was now an adult, not a little kid. He was also dressed in the style of the Egyptians, not in the style that they were used to. Prior to our text, the, their brother tested them to see if they were the same mean brothers who had sold him into slavery, or if they had somehow changed. Well, you can read about that later in your own Bibles at home. They had changed, but still they had sold him into slavery. That was after they had thrown him into a hole with the idea that they would murder him. And that's what they were going to do too, murder him, unless that is until they realized that they could make a profit by selling the boy into slavery. Well, that was way back then. Then they were the ones in power and their little brother was powerless. Now, the tables were turned. Their little brother was the one with all the power. What would their little brother do? Would he exact revenge for what they had done to him? Or would, they, would he give them the bread that they needed to survive? Life or death? Bread or revenge? That was the choice their little brother had. He chooses to give them bread, but not before he reveals his true identity. He says to them, I am your brother Joseph, who you sold into, into Egypt. They had come to Egypt so that they could eat bread. But first, they would have to eat humble pie. When Joseph made his announcements, the brothers probably were wondering, what is this little brother of ours going to do to them. So many years before, they had been so mad at Joseph. They were frustrated that he was their father's favorite. So they decided to kill him. That is, until the better option presented itself. At last, they had seen him. The last time they had seen him, he was being dragged off behind a cart going to Egypt. When Joseph got to Egypt, he was sold to a rich Egyptian. Potiphar was his name. As Joseph served Potiphar, the Lord blessed Joseph. Soon he was promoted to the job of being overseer of his master's affairs. That's the job he held until his master's wife took a liking to him. When Joseph refused to have an affair with her, she falsely accused him. She destroyed his good name and he was thrown into prison. So now Joseph had lost everything, his family, his freedom, his reputation. There Joseph was, sitting in prison. There he had made friends with a couple of his fellow prisoners who had worked for Pharaoh, the true ruler of Egypt. Those two fellow prisoners had both had dreams that Joseph correctly interpreted. When the one, when the two, one of the two were restored to his previous position at Pharaoh's side, promising to do something to get the innocent Joseph out of prison. Well, he didn't keep his promise, at least right away. The day would come, however, when Joseph was brought before Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the one who had had a dream this time, a dream which no one could interpret. That's when Joseph's fellow prisoner former fellow prisoner, remembered how Joseph had correctly interpreted his dream and the other guy's dream. When Pharaoh told Joseph about his dream, Joseph knew what it meant. There would be seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. After Joseph told Pharaoh the meaning of his dream, he was bold to suggest that they store up food from the good years, which could be used in the bad years. Pharaoh liked the suggestion so much that he appointed Joseph to oversee all of this. In fact, Pharaoh made Joseph the de facto leader in the land. That's why Joseph is the one his brothers had to come to with head in hand asking for bread. And when they found out that he was really their brother, they had to eat humble pie. 
As I have already said, Joseph did not exact revenge. That's because he knew God can use bad things that happen for good. And God used the bad things that happened to Joseph to save a whole bunch of people, including the chosen people, Jacob and his family. Of course, as we think about all this, we have to remember there are times when we, like Joseph's brothers, have we mistreated others. Maybe we never threw them down into a hole so that we could figure out how we're going to murder them, but we have been so frustrated with them that we wish they were dead. There have also been times when we have been in the place of Joseph, someone has come to us with hat and hand ready to eat humble pie, asking us to forgive them. It's sad to say sometimes we don't. For these sins, for all our sins, when we stand before our God, we are the one that must eat humble pie. God has every reason to exact revenge against us for all our sin, but what does he do? He did more than give us bread. He gave his own son to die for us and for our sin. Like Joseph, a lot of bad things happened to him, but God used it all for good. He used it to save a whole bunch of people, including you and me. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. O Lord, your servant Joseph endured hardship and struggle, yet believed it would come to good. Give us such tested faith and bring all things to completion according to your purposes in Christ, the new Adam, who has brought hope to the world. Lead all pastors, missionaries, and church workers in faithful service to your people with compassion and love. Bless every place where we hear your word and serve our neighbor in Christ's name. Help all parents who have brought, brought their children to Christ in the waters of holy baptism also bring them faithfully to worship services so that uh, Jesus may continue to take them in his arms and bless them through his word. Let your love have its way with us, Lord. Lead us to expect no self-interested reward but to love our enemies and serve those in need. Put an end to all bitterness and strife. Let Forgiveness reign between each of us, even as Christ's blood covers our sins before your heavenly throne. Uphold civil authority and those responsible to you for the welfare of our nation, state, and community. Help them steadfastly to preserve, pursue the cause of justice and protect life from beginning to natural end. Guard all first responders and protect those who defend us here and abroad. Comfort all who suffer. Deliver the sick according to your will, and sustain by your grace those troubled in body or soul. Be with the dying, and grant them peace at last, and give comfort to all those who grieve. Grant your children patience and courage to endure every time of trial with hope in Christ. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you will bring all things to completion according to your good order and time. When Christ comes and all the dead are raised, number us, we pray, among the saints in glory, clothing the perishable with the imperishable and bringing us into eternal life. We pray this in Jesus' name as we also pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. I pray that you'll have a blessed week.